they're the new heroes of cinema, Garofalo, um, because they gave me the freedom and the money to do anything I wanted in that wonderful town of Napoli. And so um, I'm very happy. It was good fun. Our friend Gabriele here seduced me into coming um, to Napoli, and it was easy to seduce me because I wanted to spend time there. And so if I can make a little film, it's a way to spend a lot of time. <laughs> And we did. And I'd always wanted to make a film with Pulcinella. Ah. Ah. And, I, and the thing that most impressed me always about the, uh, Napoli was San Gregorio Armeno, the street, and the Presepe, and the Pulcinella. And so that was where the story began. And, uh, and it just blossomed from that. But it was a nice way of being a tourist in Napoli and see all the secrets of Napoli. The, we were, we were in the underground, part of the underground city that was not for the tourists. It was a brand new section that, that a, um, archaeologists had been given the rights to excavate and develop. And uh, it was extraordinary because inside it are, were cars and motorcycles from the Second World War still there. It's fantastic. Really? It's better than the tourist one. It's now open to the tourists Bobonic now. Bobonic tunnel. Yeah, the Bob yeah, it was the Bobonic uh, tunnels. And it was absolutely incredible. Uh, so he's got it, and it's now open. But we were the first people, I think, to go in there. But yeah. literally, you would see these skeletons of old cars covered wow. in dust lying there. And even the old toilets. Because in that particular part of the underground of Naples, 10,000 people were living there during the war, during the bombers. Yeah. Hiding, hiding yeah. from the bombs. Yeah. Wow. So it's, that was incredible. And then we got to go to Kuma. Uh, where the Greeks started digging a hole in the ground and then the Romans dug some more and, everybody else, and eventually we got there. It was, uh, it was just fun because we were working with good Italian actors and, and then we used music from um, Daniele Seppe. Do you know him? Because yes. we, we had to have Neapolitan music and he's so funny. His music is so funny and he, he gave me a lot of CDs and there was one that, El hombre llama mai. And, and that's what we use in the movie. It's fantastic. Uh, so it was nice to make a little movie, a simple idea, and uh, everything went very nicely for a change for me. <laughs> it's kind of curious that a pasta company would uh, finance a movie. I've never heard of But this, uh -huh. ours was the fourth one they've done because I think they made the decision. Don't. Commercials cost a lot of money, and they're just commercials, and nobody pays attention. So the idea of making short films that are um, they're whatever you want to make. The director can do whatever he wants to do. There's no product placement. There's nothing. You make a short film, and then they put Garofalo Presenta, and that's it. And then they put it in the cinema. And I think it's a brilliant way of working, because you're giving people a nice bit of entertainment, a bit of art, something beautiful. And if you happen to like it, maybe you'll remember that off for Wonderful. And the, ah, yeah, what? yeah, yeah, that's true. You're what? getting a Fellini the, award. The hero of a Fellini. Uh, the hair of Fellini. Ah, this is, uh, this is interesting. I mean, uh, if I'm going to get a prize anywhere, to be given the a Fellini prize is pretty extraordinary because, I mean, he was my hero. And... Uh, Forget about Antonio, forget about Rossellini, forget about all of them, the <laughs> Taviani. It was Fellini that I, I, I really was uh, inspired by. And, uh, and so to be, to be blessed by the family is kind of nice. Did you meet him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Because when, when we were making Munchausen, he was a little bit bothered that I had stolen Dante Ferretti from him, uh, and I had stolen Gabriele Pescucci, and I was in Cinicita on his turf, on his land. Not on Studio 5, were you? With a lot of money. Of course we were in Studio 5. With a lot of money, too. Yeah, with more money than he ever had. And so he used to... I remember there was one day, because my office was inside of the art department, in the middle of Dante's, Ferretti's office, and I tried to get out of the door one day, and I couldn't get out because it was blocked, because Fili had Marcello Mastrioni in a sky blue, electric blue suit as Mandrake the Magician. And he was in a tree outside of the door, and the whole crew was blocking the door so he could shoot his scene. But he was doing it to say, I'm the boss, this is my place. <laughs> and he was wonderful. And my last night in Roma, finally we had dinner together at uh, 
Il Moro, the restaurant Il Moro, uh, yeah. with Giulietta and Dante and all. Um, and the best thing was, oh, I, actually I said to him as I was walking there, I said, I've been here eight months and I've made this movie, but I think actually the Italians made their movie. I actually think I was raped, I said to him. <laughs> but I must admit it felt rather good. <laughs> and the last time I saw him was he and I were walking arm in arm around the Fontana di Trevi. And I thought, I'm in love. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. Well, thank you. Grazie. Grazie, Terry. Cittadino onorario di Montone. Sì. <laughs> Premio Cinema Italian Style quest'anno. Sì, Presidente della, della sì, festa Montone Festival. di Montone. Presidente del sì, Festival sì, di Montone. Sì. <laughs> We have a 12 Montone. Eh? A Los Angeles. Yeah. Grazie.